what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Modi j and we are locked in this is bmf episode seven now we need to address the elephant in the room there was a lot of people that got their water turned off last week and now we want to know with lamar coming after nicole is she going to tell and put the family in more jeopardy because now they're talking to the police we're going to jump into that but first shout out to the notification gang if you're new to the channel you want to be a part of it hit your subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload hit that like button it's the easiest thing you can do now we know the police will want to question nicole about this but will she talk is the question so let's jump into it this is episode seven of bmf in the 1980s light skin was in most dark skinned dudes thought i was soft so i made my business to prove them wrong by any means necessary demetrius big meech we start the episode off with Meech and T sprinting to the hospital because all they know is Nicole's at the hospital and something bad happens. So T goes one hallway, Meech goes down the other, and they're looking for where their sister is. Now you hear Big Meech narrating saying the only family that they had was the people that lived on their block. So pretty much it was just them, the siblings and the parents. So they learn to look out for one another. They finally find a room and when they get in there, Nicole is crying. She's traumatized her first boyfriend and is someone getting killed. Now she's talking to T and Meech and she's saying it's all their fault because of the things that they've done. Now T and Meech, they're asking her, does she know who it was? Who Have you seen this person before? Who was it? Now, if you remember, Lamar confronted T at the mall. It was just T by himself with Wanda, Nicole, and Darius. He held it down, but he was by himself. Even Meech is looking like... The guy at the mall, he, what, what happened, T? Because Meech wasn't there. But now they know it was Lamar, and it's like, damn, it's getting even thicker than what we thought. Of course, Detective Brian and Lopez are the first on the scene. They're telling Nicole, you need to come down. We need to question you. And then Meech is like, nah, she's not going anywhere with you. Brian said, we already spoke to your parents. She's got to come with us. Now, he's looking at it. In my mind, I'm thinking, she's underage. We're not letting her just ride with the cops, so we're going to go anyway. But he turns around and hugs her. And he whispers, you know what to do. Pretty much saying, don't talk to the police. Once they get her down to the station, she gets to talk to her parents. Now, parents have to be in the room with a minor or a lawyer. That's the only way police can talk to her. But before they come in, the parents are talking to her. And they're asking her, is it someone you know? And she's sitting there crying. And they're saying, is it someone your brother's dealing with? What, what's really going on here? Now, Charles, he wants her to tell exactly who it is. He's like, man, I don't want none of this mess coming back to the house. Let's get the police on this case. But now Lucille's saying, nah, let's not do that because it's still protecting their sons if it is something that they got into. On the other side of the two-way mirror, we have the captain talking to Detective Bryant. And they're trying to listen in, but the, the intercom system's all messed up and janky. So what she does is she tells Detective Bryant, all right, look, you stay out here. We're going to go in there and talk to him, me and Lopez. And he's like, why, why I got to stay out here? She's saying, well, she's traumatized and we don't want to have too many people in there to crowd her. Pretty much what they're doing is isolating Brian because Lopez has been trailing them. So it's kind of like, yeah, Brian, you want to get in there so you can get some information? No, 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 no. You just sit back here and watch. Captain comes in there and she starts interrogating Nicole. Do you know who it was? Nicole's like, mm -mm, no, I don't. Never seen him before. And then she's saying, okay, well, we got witnesses say, um, he came after you. He was trying to get you. She's like, no, nah, that's not how it happened. He, he just came up and started stabbing Darius. So she knows she's lying. But also, they probably don't have any witnesses. They just want to see, you know what I'm saying, they're fishing to see if she's going to get out, give out any answer. Now, the parents should have already canceled this and said, no, we're not speaking to anyone without a lawyer. But they were thinking of the money aspect. Even though Meech and T had the money, you still never talk to the police without a lawyer. But the captain, she just keeps fishing. Well... If you've seen him before, would you be able to recognize him? And Nicole, she's sitting there. She keep hearing what Meech is telling her. You know what to do. That means don't talk to the police. So the family, they end up saying, hey, we're done. You know what? You're questioning her a little too much. We're going to get her out of here because she's still a kid. And you hear Lopez talking about this is related to, to your, your brother's selling drugs or anything. You know, this could be an offense. Yeah, you got the captain. You know, lying to a cop is an offense, too. Well, not for a minor. It's not. They're not going to do too much for a minor. <laughs> But they get up out of there. That's the smartest thing they could do. Meech and Terry having another one of them brother conversations. But they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to sacrifice themselves just to make sure that the family's good? Are they going to have to move the family? Is Lamar really going to come after us? But T's telling them, man, all you do is think about yourself. You, Nikki's boyfriend, Darius, died. Now, 
T was around Darius way more than Meech was. Obviously, he was giving him money and he, you know, he would see him at the house. But Meech is saying, we're going to pay for his funeral. We're going to handle all that. But at this point, man, we in too deep, man. It looks like we might have to sacrifice ourselves to make sure our family is good. Let me know what y'all think. Do you think that they will actually sacrifice themselves? T tells me straight up, look, if we are going to go through with this, we got to really have a plan for plausible deniability, meaning if something happens, oh, no, we can deny that. No, we, why would we do that? No, no, no. Pretty much getting yourself out the jam. Now, I do got to mention, you remember they said Meech was too flashy? He had a Fila outfit on. T got that same outfit on, just reverse colors. <laughs> We finally get introduced to white boy Rick. Now, we don't get much from him. We just see Meech come over and dap him up. He's like, what up, Meech? No, what's up? Now, Tiny's with Meech, and they're about to come up with a plan. But he asks, hey, who was that? He's like, oh, man, that's white boy Rick. Now, if you know anything about white boy Rick, he was moving them things. Even though he's working for the government, he was moving them things, and he was a young kid. Meech is talking to Tiny because they got a little partnership going on. Tiny hooked him up with his cousin Q, and, you know, that might be the new where we dump them off at but me just telling tiny if you start working with me with your brains and me out here getting it we can make some things happen you can be the one of the biggest players out here now what he's telling tiny is look if you do this for me you make a few things happen when the next rehab come i'm gonna give you them things for the low low so really this is giving tiny an opportunity to make a lot more money we've seen how they pulled up on lamar last week yeah they ain't scared of lamar no more as soon as they got home from the precinct, Charles went in the room. He started packing up suitcases. He's talking about, we need to get out of here now. Lucille said, I'm not leaving my house. Charles said, well, shoot, you can stay here. But me and Nicole, we getting out of here. We going to a motel or shelter or something. And at this point, I agree with Charles. I haven't agreed with Charles in the first six episodes. But right now, he is correct. If the best thing to do is get out of this house and lay low for a little bit. Now, Lucille's talking about, we can save the boys. He said, they too far gone. They kidnapped somebody. And he's right. At this point, yeah, you love your kids, but you still got to make sure you're good and your daughter is good. Lucille's saying, well, what about T? You said we could still save him. Charles is like, uh, I am gone. You can stay here if you want to. I'm not about to try to save nobody that don't want to be saved. Let's take a shower. Shower together. I'll wash your body. And you watch mine, turn off the lights, and light a candle. Man, they got crazy Lamar in here. They got that Teddy Pendergrass playing. So you know what time it is. Load up the weapons, because we on a mission. Now, Lamar's packing up his weapons, getting ready to go outside and go find them light-skinned brothers. But guess who pulls up? It's Tiny. And they ain't playing. Now, you remember, Meech just told him, if you handle this for me on the re-up, you're going to get a good price. So what he was telling them to handle, let's go get Lamar for me. They pull up in one of the raggedy old brown vans. I'm talking about letting it go. Tiny all out the window because he thinking about them prices being low. Hey, oh, yeah, we got to go ahead and get Lamar out of here, turn his water off. But Lamar makes it back into the house. It looks like he's hit, though. He closes the door and now they in the house looking for this man. They search in all the rooms. They see that Lamar is hit though. So they fall on the blood trail and then they go outside and they look up under the house. Tiny's telling the rest of the crew, hey, he's still in the house. We gotta find him. We gotta make sure we get rid of him. But you hear the sirens in the background. So it's like, man, the police are on the way. You didn't hurt people outside. This is middle of the day. We gotta get out of here before we get identified. So for right now, Lamar is still alive. He's shot though, but he's still alive. So that means there's still a problem. Me shows up to Tiny and Neil's little club. He's like, what the f Hey, he ain't dead. Y'all let him go? Now, you hear them both saying, nah, we got him, man. You ain't got to worry about it. We got him. He leaking. Me just saying, man, he old school. He ain't about to go to no hospital. So, they're like, all right, we'll check the vets. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, every vet in the hood, we're going to go check. Now, Tiny is telling them, you don't have to worry about nothing, Meech. He doesn't know it was you. He's seen me doing it. So now you got Tiny scared because he's like, damn, he knows Lamar's going to come back for him. That's why he wanted to find him today. But Meech is like, hey, y'all get it done. But if y'all find out anything, call me. Call me first. Tiny tries to dap him up. Meech looks at him like, nigga, y'all ain't get the job done. Lamar hit, but he's still out here trying to find a way. 
he breaks into a house. He breaks the window and goes into the bathroom. Now he's in there and he got to treat his wound because he can't go to the hospital. And he knows that they looking around the street, so he can't go to a vet. So he's in here and you know he in pain. He took a bottle of alcohol, poured it on the, mm, on the towel. Yeah! It would have been screaming my ass off, but Lamar doing what he got to do. And even through all this, he got that do-rag on that mini afro. We see Kato coming out of the corner store, but by the time she makes it to the door, you see the cops pull up and they swooping up and they catching everybody. First of all, we got a young kid that died. Then we just had a drive-by. So they cracking down on everybody they see out on the streets. Kato sees this, she runs back into the store. And what does she do? She takes off that 50 boy chain. She takes off that jacket. Well, she tucks the 50 boy chain. Let me catch you without your chain on, that's your butt. But she tucks the chain, puts her hair up. Like, nah, I'm not part of them. I'm just a girl with a, with a little sucker. Now, Kato, like I said, she puts her hair up. She takes off her big flashy jacket, tucks her chain. And she goes and acts like she's on the phone. So if any cops see her, oh, I'm just on the phone, officer. I don't know anything that's going on. But Detective Lopez has been watching this whole thing and he sees her. He's just looking and he slowly creeps by. So Kato, she's going to probably have to separate herself from this because it's getting ugly in these streets, man. It's a war going on outside. She makes that call and lets them know, hey, we got a fucking problem. Like right now, right now. Monique gets home with Zoe and she's talking about, girl, get, get those groceries, put them up. And when you get done, do your homework. I'm going to take these boots off because my feet are killing me it's been a long day now let mama go to this bathroom now in my head all i'm thinking about is how my mom and dad used to yell at us put them groceries up. i'm like dang chill dad let, let us rest we kids but she goes in the bathroom and it turns out this is the house that lamar broke into and when she opens up the door lamar bleeding windows broken he's talking about look i got shot i just need to clean up for a little bit now you know she's scared at this point she's like oh shit she's like all right go ahead clean up because you don't want to startle lamar I just said Mo took it as, you know, she's kind of nervous now. You know, I'm going to let him clean up. Nah, she tells him, I'm going to call the cops. Okay, you don't want to get up? She gets up and tries to go walk away to call the police. He grabs her arm. She had an option to just let him clean up. He gave her option B and C. I'm like, damn, Lamar's on the rampage now. He didn't knock out Mo. Now, Lamar, he's lost it completely. She hit him in the arm. He knocked her out. He picked her up, put her against the wall and talking about, look what you made me do. Lamar, ain't nobody make you do this, brother. You did this on your own. But I'll tell you this. He did all this with one hand and a bullet in the other arm. This dude is relentless and he will not give up. This is one time Mo is glad that Zoe did not start her homework because if she didn't come in there and say, dad, Lamar probably wouldn't have stopped. Thank you, Zoe, for being there. Ladies, stay away from these abusive relationships. These thugs you guys like, these bad boys, this is usually what comes with it. Leave it alone, man. Lucille goes back and she's begging Karen, please, please, I'm sorry how my husband talked to you because y'all know Charles messed it up. She gave y'all offer of 25000 y'all didn't do nothing with it, and then you called her conniving. Now, Lucille's telling Karen, you know, you need to pray and forgive and forget. She's like, I'm a preacher's niece. Look, I, I know the Bible, but... I might have something for you guys. Since I like you, Lucille, there was a nurse that was there at the second surgery that might be able to testify and say that there was an accident during the surgery. So Lucille saying that that's good. But Karen also says, well, no one knows where she is. She quit. So they got to try to find this nurse that was there during the surgery. And Karen says, you know what, Lucille, for you, I'll, I'll get back on you guys' case. I would have said, I'll get on your case. But Charles is not allowed to talk to me at all because she knows if they can win this, she'll get some money in her pocket. Meech pulls up on Mo, and when he gets in the house, he's looking at her face like, damn, what happened to you? She's like, I'm done with Lamar. This dude came in here and did that. But then she also tells Meech, just because I let you in my house, I'm not going to forgive you for taking Zoe. And I understand that. But then she's saying, uh, you know what I'm saying? He could probably be at Slick's house, but then again, he might be at his cousin's because that's where he went when he got out. Now, Meech is talking about he can't go back over to Slick's house because, you know, there's some crazy stuff that happened there. But he's like, look, don't worry, I got you. Now, the thing about Mo is she's playing both sides. She just told Lamar a couple of weeks ago, oh, he stayed at his parents' house. So once they found that out, Lamar could come at his parents. But 
Now she's keeping herself in the game, keeping her daughter and all of this nonsense, still dealing with Meech. Remove yourself from all of this. You just, okay, well, now this one to take care of me. But Meech is saying, look, don't worry about it. We're going to get Lamar. But what I'm telling Mo is you need to remove yourself from Lamar and Meech. You just putting you and your daughter in danger. The crew is together and they're talking about everybody getting picked up on the streets. Eat courses. The block is hot. Now they asking Kato, why they didn't get you? She said, because I'm a female and I know how to switch things up. When Meech comes in, he knows the block is hot and he tells T, you need to talk to Big L and see if we can get some time. And the reason he's asking for more time is because if they can't get on the block because the police are out there and Lamar's on the loose, they can't sell and make the money for whatever they're supposed to re-up with. Now T is saying, this is our first time with her. This will be, be this will be bad business. And Meech says, hey, you wanted to do 50-50? This is your connect? You got to handle that. After Kato leaves and T leaves, Meech tells B. Mickey, I know it's personal. You treat my sister like it's your sister. We gonna handle this. Mo gave me an address. You know, B. Mickey, he he hyped. He talked about cat. Let's go. And me said, all right, we'll go ride. But you gotta dead that relationship with Kato. T seen that jacket at your house and the rules are rules. You can't mix business with pleasure. You can't mess with somebody in the crew, B. Mickey. And B. Mickey's talking about, no man, she's special. B. Mickey, ain't nothing special about that girl. That junkie house she living in. After really thinking about it, T goes to see Big L. Because, hey, we do need an extension. And he's going to have to see her one way or another. When he gets there, she starts explaining how she got into the art industry. Her dad was a struggling artist there. He passed. Her brother took over the business, ran it down. She finished school and took it over. Now, everything that she's talking about, if you listen closely, she's actually relating it to the dope game. Art is really what the, you know, what somebody thinks it about the price. If this is what I say it goes for, then this is what it goes for. If this is what the bricks go for, then this is what the bricks are going to go for. You see what I'm saying? But she's actually telling T a few things about the game. Now, he's looking at it thinking, man, I'm in the wrong industry if she's, you know what I'm saying, making money like this. But let's stop all the small talk. T, what are you here for today? And he's saying, you know, I'm kind of in a bind right now. I might need a little extension. Now, Big L tells him, is this because of your brother? He's like, nah, it ain't got nothing to do with him. Because she's from the understanding of when when I dealt with y'all, you told me outside that y'all want to buy up front. Y'all going to have the money. We ain't going to have any of these issues. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, we just need a little extension. Long story short, there is no extension. We're going to uphold the deal that we agreed on and you got to make it happen. So now T and Meech, they're going to have to figure it out in these streets because uh, Big L ain't Pat. <laughs> it ain't no 10 points. It's either you got it or you don't. Terry and Meech, they got the address to Lamar's cousin's house. So, you know, they coming up there with the silencers on. It's time to get this fool Lamar. They kick in. They looking through all the rooms they surveying. And we hear TV on in the living room. It's time for action. When they get in there, B. Mickey, you know, he trigger happy. He's getting ready to start pack up, pack up, pack up. But Meech comes in. He's like, oh, hold up. And B. Mickey shoots the wall. Turns out. There was a little kid right there. B. Mickey was about to get another unnecessary body on his hands. B. Mickey's like, hey, don't even give me a gun. You know what I'm going to do with it. Choo, choo, choo. But Meech is like, hey, has a guy named Lamar been here? He said, nah, not since my mom moved in. Nah, we ain't, I ain't seen no Lamar. Meech pulls out a stack, probably about $5,000 and gives it to this kid. You ain't seen nothing and you don't know nothing. I would have put out the stack and gave him like a hundred. Like, hey, you ain't seen nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because 5000 that's a little steep for a kid that definitely ain't going to remember who nobody is anyway. Meech and T, they're having a discussion on how they're going to get this money because Big L is it's non-negotiable. The deadline is the deadline. Now, T is saying we can tell all the other workers, you know, Tiny and all them, the date moved up. And Meech is saying, nah, that's what Pat did. We want everybody to be loyal to us. So we're just going to have to figure out another way. So what they come up with is they got to get in these streets and start selling with them and try to get rid of everything that they have. Now, T is smart about it. He says, all right, if we do that, we can't both be working at the same time. We got to take shifts. As a matter of fact, Meech, you take that first shift. And, oh, shoot, what time it is? I got to go. Meech is like, man, where you going, bro? T saying, look, I got to go, man. Just let my man go. But you got to get out there and work, man. Put that blunt down. You got to get focused. And he got a 40. It's the day of the funeral. This is where T ended up leaving to go to. Meech didn't even know when the funeral was. And he said he was paying for it. He's like... Yeah, whatever. 
But when they get there, you know, Charles is always mad. He tells T straight up, we ain't buying what you selling. And he walks into the church. <laughs> T's like, man, I'm, I'm just here to pay my respects. Lucille, she's happy to see that her son is there. And then we actually see Darius's family. So, you know, they're hurt. And I don't even know if they want to deal with the Flinneries at this point. We had a woman singing. Pastor Swift gets up there and he gives us the word. Let me tell y'all something. The devil is a lie. He's misleading our young black brothers. We getting killed by one another. We all must go one day. So you need to get right now. Because tomorrow isn't promised. Everybody up there like, amen, preacher. Amen. You even got T over there. He feeling it like, man, hey, I ain't really, you know what I'm saying, mess with Pastor Swift. But he talking that talk today. On the way out, they're getting ready to carry the casket out. And Lucille goes to talk to Darius's mom. And she turns around like, hey, Nicole, can I talk to you? The police told me you ain't telling the truth about what happened to Darius. And you hear Lucille saying she told the cops everything she knows. She's like, nah, they said you lying. And Lucille, you coming in here sitting like you all high and mighty, like your sons don't sell drugs. If I'm T, I'm like, hey, shh, be saying that out loud. People, I don't sell no drugs. Come on, I don't sell any drugs. But she's like, look, you need to tell the truth. Because, of course, a mom is concerned about her son. She wants to know the facts and what really happened to her son that day because he saved your daughter that's the least you can do is tell the cops the truth our two detectives brian and lopez now brian he's in here trying to hit the lottery i know all my people in here we play that lottery a little bit you wake up in the morning i need to hit the damn lottery so he goes in there lopez like how much do you spend on that he's talking about a lot <laughs> now lopez he's always on the job so he's looking around he's like man what the 50 boys they out here in the rain oh yeah we need to go talk to them Brian's like, bro, we didn't bust their head too much. Plus, it's raining. Ain't no one trying to be out in the rain. But Lopez, he hops about the car because the job is never done. I'm talking about Lopez gets out with the skinny jeans on, a leather jacket. I'm talking about running full speed. Now, the guy he's chasing, I'm like, man, you got a hoodie and stuff on. You need to be a little more athletic than that. You ain't trying to mess up the white shoes you got on. But then you see Lopez just jump on him, got him in the mud. And when he turns him over, it's Meech. And Meech is looking up like, oh, damn, it's Detective Lopez. But this was very unexpected. Cato was with him. She turns around. She hits she hits Detective Lopez in the back of the head with a pipe. I'm talking about he falls over. He bleeding out. Meech is saying, thank you, but let's go. They get up out of there now. Cato has a body on her. She leaves the weapon right there, too. She didn't even throw it off. She just dropped it. I mean, it's raining, so the fingerprint should be able to disappear if you know what i mean but they run off detective brian comes he's calling it in we got an officer down now i know people been saying they need to get rid of the cop now it doesn't have nothing to do with meech and t this is on kato so that's kind of good because you know we can hey you can't be rocking with us but at least lopez is out of the out of the picture for a little bit t and wanda they come back to the house with you know terry jr and they're all sitting around the table wanda has to go to the bathroom and she asks for permission lucille's saying girl you don't have to ask you you like our daughters then it's, it's in the same spot now t goes over there and he talks to his sister and he's saying he's apologizing about what happened to darius and it shouldn't have happened because this is all the nonsense that they were into but you can see some growth in nicole and she's telling them you know i still love you and everything this wasn't your fault i mean really it wasn't their fault because lamar did it but ultimately it came from their actions and what happened before but that's good we hear in the beginning of the show meech said as a family and a siblings they learn to take care of each other and look out for each other lucille goes and catches wanda when she comes out the bathroom and what she's doing is telling her hey wanda some of this is on you you're enabling them she's not telling terry oh we got a kid we need to make sure that we straight and leave the game alone she's talking about nah you need to be independent you need to be doing your own thing and Lucille's saying, you're pushing them into doing this stuff. You're not saying, hey, we have a family. Let's leave the dope game alone. It's just the whole cycle. And Lucille's saying, please don't fight me on this. Because you out here trying to get money for the kid and stuff. You're putting her son in jeopardy to try to save your daughter and you. But Lucille's saying, this will work for both of us. It'll save your family and it will save my son. Try to get him out the game. 
Kato just called a body or potentially called one in the first place she goes to be Mickey's house. Now he's over here looking at a picture of her. Oh man, I'm gonna miss her because Meech told him to cut that off. She's pounding on the door. He opens up the door. She's talking about this is bad. I hear the cop and I hear them bad. Now, me personally, I would have said, well, this is the wrong place for you to be at. I can't have no cop killer over here. I already got a body on my name. Now, if there's an attempted murder or a murder on a cop, they coming for everybody. So I would have told her, you got to get up out of here, get your stuff and get on the road. But he's like, don't worry. It's going to be all right. He's comforting her and stuff. And we got a we got a real emergency on our hands. And what does she do? She talking about, I feel better with you. She gets naked and they get in the bed. I'm like, man, these kids, they just just said, hell, the hell with the police. Now, after they get done, they want to smoke a little bit, but they ain't got no papers. So they talking about somebody got to go to the store. <sighs> B-Miggy's like, all right, I'll go do it. You know, you got to lay low anyway. But when he gets up, she's talking about when you get back, I want to talk to you about something. And he's like, all right, cool. I, I got to talk to you about something also. Now, when he leaves, they zoom in on his gun. He leaves it in the house now one you need that thing on you at all times when you're in these streets and two we can't trust Cato. but i'm thinking the reason he's leaving at the house is because if the police are picking up people you don't want to be caught with it but it's always the saying is better to be caught with it than caught without it back at the hospital we get up what is it doctor what, what do we have here well there was a <clears throat> There was some hemorrhaging. Uh, we had surgery. Uh, I don't know how to break it to y'all, but we lost Detective Lopez. And they both hurt. Because even though Detective Lopez is looking at Bryant, it still was your partner. You still got some feelings towards it. So now Cato has a, a body on her hand, a cop. So you know they about to be cracking down hard. We get to stare down between Detective Bryant and, and Captain because she hating. But she tells him, look, you need to get back to the office and do a debrief. And what the debrief is, we used to call it hot washes. You go in and you talk about everything that happened. You pretty much get in the document it documented and get it out now because it's fresh in your memory. But she also tells him, look, who are you going to go talk to? Why aren't you going straight to the office? You going to go talk to Demetrius? He's like, look, if you're going to charge me with this murder or you got anything on me, then do it right now. Because if not... Get the F out my face. And she's talking about if you're dirty, you're going to wish you were the one that was dead. So now these two, they're going to be going at it. But with Lopez out the scene, he can really step away from Meech and make it look like he ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Kato, she's just laying in the bed like nothing went on today. <sighs> A door opens up. It turns out it's Lamar. She's talking about, I hope you rolled out. He's like, yeah, I did. Now he picks up the gun. I told you they focused on that. And he's telling Kato, if I didn't know no better, you out here smashing the lieutenant. She's like, no, I'm just trying to get close. He's like, nah, 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 nah. Let, let B. Mickey come in here. I'm going to pop, pop. I need some target practice. But Kato has feelings for him. She's like, nah, don't do that, you know, because he, he's good. I'm just trying to get in the circle. So with Lamar, he has a proposition for her. He tells Kato, I'm going to spare B. Mickey, but you got to kill Meech. And she's like, how am I going to do that? He's like, I don't know. That's what you're going to figure out, though. So she said, we're going to go after Meech? No, 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 not me. I'm going after T. You got to kill Meech. And if not, I'm going to kill you. So now Kato, she gets to say be Mickey, but she has to kill Meech. So I don't know how she's going to do this or what she's going to do. But I tell y'all every time we see Kato, she's an opportunist. If the opportunity is better with Lamar, she's going to rock with Lamar. If Meech and them are giving a little more protection at that time, she's going to rock with Meech. B. Mickey had pulled up. He out front. He rapping. He getting focused. I got me a little thing on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Got some papers. But when he looks out the window, he sees Lamar walking out. He's like, oh, shit. He reaches in the glove department, but he left his gun inside the house. So he's ducking down, hoping Lamar don't see him. Because at this point, <laughs> Lamar, he's killing anybody. And B. Mickey ain't got no weapon on him. B. Mickey comes in, picks up the gun, points it straight at her. It ain't no time for games. Start talking. Because I just seen Lamar come up out my house. She's talking about, no, 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 look, look, look. All right. I was working for Lamar. But B. Mickey, he ain't trying to hear that. He doesn't believe it because he has his feelings involved. Now she's saying, no, nah, I work for Lamar. My dad used to run with him back in the day. My dad, he passed. And I got in a little jam. Lamar took the body for me and took the charge. So that's why Lamar went to jail because it was a body that Cato had. And she's like, look, in the beginning, I, I, I was playing you, but I, I, grew, I grew as a family with y'all, 50 boys, y'all my family, I, and I wouldn't play you like that. B. Mickey, he's real hurt right now. But Meech told him, cut her off. 
she talking about be mickey i would never do that to you you know me i love you you love me i would have said what's love got to do got to do with it who needs a heart when a heart can be broken but be mickey he's falling for it and she's talking a way out of it i love you put the gun down and he's over here in his feelings hell no nah. i'm calling meech i keep my gun on her meech pull up now lamar was just here matter of fact i'm dipping out but i got kato in the trunk <laughs> forget that i'm not dealing with her what did i tell y'all week three and week four kato's gonna try to convince b mickey to help her take down lamar b mickey said oh man i gotta call i gotta call meech about this man she's like nah he's not gonna believe you and now she's talking about help me take lamar down hell no nah. Lamar came in here, there was a gun in here, and you didn't do nothing? How can I trust you? You had an easy chance to catch Lamar on the way out, and you didn't do nothing. But B. Mickey using his heart and not his, mm-hmm, not his brain. Terry and Wanda finally had a conversation that they need. Not the conversation of her telling Terry, hey, you need to do your own thing. You need to be trying to expand and make things happen on your own. But now she's telling Terry, look, you need to get out the game. You got shot. People are coming after us. This isn't a safe environment for us and the baby. And Terry's like, what? You t you're telling me this now? Like, I'm in I'm in the game now. It, we at war. It's not no just wave the white flag and it's over with. T is like, I got too much money in the streets. Why didn't you say that a couple of weeks ago before I got the plug with Big L? Because if we don't get the money for Big L, that's going to be a big L for us. And I'm talking about an L in these streets. You see that play on words? <laughs> but Terry's like man what and she's talking about you got to choose us or the streets hello streets of course brian got to meet up with meech because we got to figure out who the hell killed lopez and then they meet up under a bridge and he's like hey yeah my partner was murdered today what you know meech and meech is like hey man i don't know nothing about that murder i i ain't do it and brian's like yeah i know you're not dumb enough to do that like I've been saying in other episodes, Meech and Terry, they aren't killers. They're not going to just kill somebody to kill somebody. It's going to be a righteous kill like Lamar coming at them. Self-defense. But Detective Brian is telling Meech, you know, I got the power to make you disappear right now. Basically mean I can get you killed right now. I can take you into jail. And Meech is like, well, I got stuff on you, too. He said, and nigga, I don't give a f You ain't going to be able to use it. But he's basically telling Meech, hey, the block is hot right now. And, uh. Things are going to need to be answered because uh, I'm out here looking for people now, especially because I know Captain's on my back and I got to wash my hands or she going to wash me out. So he tells him, tell your mom, I send her my condolences. There you go. Episode seven of BMF. Now, this show just gets crazier and crazier. I want to know what do you think is going to happen between B. Mickey and Kato? Are they going to work together to get Lamar or is B. Mickey going to actually talk to Meech and tell Meech, hey, we can't really trust Kato. Or we need to use Kato to set up a plan. Let me know what you guys think. I'm Mo.J. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.